Well everyone, welcome back to my nightmare. So my plan today was to replace the wheel bearings because I have a front end noise that I couldn't hear until I got the exhaust fixed. You can hear it a little bit here. I don't know if this is the bad side or that's the bad side, but that doesn't sound good. It's pretty hard to turn. So I ran into multiple problems, most of which were caused by the fact that I'm working at my dad's shop, and my dad was not a mechanic. He was an electrical engineer who liked to play with electric vehicles. So mechanic-related tools are in short supply out here. So what I need most to finish this is actually just a set of wrenches that are metric. And there's just like a random assortment of standard wrenches out here, and there's a lot of gaps, and I can't get in here with a socket wrench. And the only reason I have any sockets out here is because I brought them from home. So I am putting it back together defeated. Another problem I encountered, it seemed easier to get to everything if I just took the ball joint out. I couldn't get the ball joint out, but I did discover this. So that's not great. I had already planned to place the ball joints and all the front end stuff when it warmed up. And that plan is still still there, just more urgent now. I have to tighten that ball joint all the way. I'm like three threads past the hole for the cotter pin. So these ball joints are screwed. So then the other problem, this nut in the middle, I'm not sure what size it is, but the largest wrench I have out here is 32 millimeter, and it is bigger than that. So even if I did manage to get the ball joint apart, and then manage to get the bolts out of the wheel bearing mount, I still wouldn't be able to take that off. So um, I think all I've done is just moved up my urgency for the complete front end redo, because if I take this ball joint off, I'm not going to want to put it back on. And I'm sure the other side is just as bad. But it was a nice thought. What are you going to do? I got plenty of other things to do out here. Alright, so one thing I am going to do while I have this up here is bleed the brakes. I replaced the master cylinder last week, didn't film any of it because I forgot my tripod. And I kind of bled the brakes, it didn't do a great job, so I was going to give it another shot today. At least the fronts. Uh, before I had no rear brakes, now I have all four, they're just a little squishy. So I'm going to do that while I have it up here and I'll do the same to the other side. And then I got a few other things to do that I'll talk about in a minute. Here's the grand update for today. Just a lot of disappointments. So I talked about the hub issues earlier, and it's really just my fault. I don't have the right tools out here. So I will be back out with the right tools maybe next weekend. Maybe I'll put up with it for a little longer. I mean, now it's, it's going to be February in a couple days. So I mean, really, once you get to March, you start having decent days outside. So maybe I can wait and just do it at home in my driveway, it'd be a lot easier than coming out here and running the heater and looking for tools. Another thing you saw me do was messing around with the relay up there. That was the blower motor relay, and that was the reason I didn't have high fan speed. I did. I figured that out by looking at the schematic. I thought it was the switch at first on the dash. That switch only controls low, medium, and mediumer, whatever, one, two, three. But there's a fourth speed, and that doesn't have anything to do with um, like the resistor network or any of that. All it does is just flips a relay and sends power straight to the motor 
full 12 volts. And I looked at the schematic and said, I bet it's that relay. So I pulled that relay apart and I don't know what's been done to it, but it was like things soldered together and wires spliced. And so I replaced it and it works fine. I have to get a new plug for it. I didn't realize how bad that was and I have to order it. But right now I just have a uh, little quick disconnect connectors and it should be fine for a while. Um, I bled the brakes. Seems like that's working better now. I guess we'll see once I get on the road. I added air to the tires. Those were all really low. Something I just never thought to check since buying it. I replaced the ignition switch because I've been having trouble starting it and realized that if I wiggle the switch, it'll like break connection and uh, the lights on the dash will flicker. So I replaced that. Hopefully that takes care of that. I was going to replace the hood release cable because I don't have a lever. It's just the cable sticking out that you have to grab onto and pull. So I ordered the cable and I didn't realize how big a pain in the ass it was. I am not doing that today. I don't know how to even get to the whole thing if you have to take out the inner fender well or what, but it's there's a lot more to it than I thought. So I'm just gonna keep tugging on that little cable. Um, in the last couple of weeks, I had the exhaust replaced and it makes a huge difference. It just feels like it's running better. I don't know how much it helps, but it can't hurt because the catalytic converter was missing and the downstream O2 sensor was missing. So now that that's all hooked back up, it should be running better. It sure sounds better. The problem is it's made me notice all the different clunks and squeaks and bearing noises and things that this car makes. It's, it's still got a lot of stuff to sort out, but I'm actually well, maybe not today, but normally having fun working on it. It's been it's been kind of fun. I mean, I bought a new car in 08 and just drove it for 12 years. And, you know, for a lot of that, it was under warranty and kind of missed working on my daily driver. But not today. I'm done today. <laughs> I'm over it. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was money. I'm right at that point where I'm starting to question if this was a good investment. Remember, I bought it for 2000 and I have just now crossed the point of doubling that. I've spent another 2000 on this. Most of that in the exhaust. When you go to a muffler shop and get a new catalytic converter, oxygen sensor, muffler, all that, that was like $1,100. And then there was, the rest of that was, you know, wheel bearings and the few engine parts and things like that. I don't know, the market's pretty hot right now for used cars and everything's selling for more than it's worth. And there's people on eBay, other car sites trying to sell these for just stupid money so maybe i'll still be in good shape and i'm not done because i want to get all new ball joints tie rod ends but that'll be when it warms up hopefully i can make it that far um oh another little bit of b-roll that i filmed i'll run that here that was when i fixed the hole in the transfer case and it was a whole thing i ground it down i patched it with some of that two-part epoxy stuff that you kind of knead together and stick on there like play-doh Started filling it up, was pouring back out again because I missed one little hole next to the big hole. So I drained it again, repatched it, then filled it, then it was good. So right now I have a new dash switch for four wheel drive, new actuator, new vacuum lines, and there's fluid in the transfer case. And I still have zero out of the four wheel drive system. Like no lights on the dash, you push the buttons, nothing clicks, nothing makes a noise. It's just completely dead. It, I don't know what where to even dig next. Fortunately, the thing runs great in two-wheel drive in the snow, so it, it hasn't really been a problem. I would like to get that four-wheel drive working, and I'm starting to think it's going to be something with the computer that controls it, but I haven't dug into it. There's lots to do. It's turning into a money pit. I might start to hate this car, but I haven't yet. I'm still having a blast with it. And I'm not sure how much B-roll I have of this too, but I did replace the gas shocks on the rear window and I took the little switch that you use to open the rear glass, took it apart, found a lot of corrosion on the contacts, was able to just clean it up, put it back together, and now that works. So I can get in my tailgate. That's nice. But there's still a lot of just stupid little things I'm discovering every day where it's like, oh, there's another thing I have to fix. Today I just noticed one. I've never locked the doors in this. There's nothing in it. It's a beat up pile. I live in a nice neighborhood. I work at a place with security cameras. So I've never locked it. I've been driving it for a month. Today I was gonna program some remotes and see if I could get them to program because I assumed this came with key fobs when it was new. So the first step has to do with like pushing lock unlock or something and holding it down and doing something. And uh, I realized the doors don't have the oomph 
to lock or unlock. You push the button and it makes noise, but the little levers don't move. So there's another thing I get to do, but what are you gonna do? You bought a 22 year old car. What do you expect? So I'm gonna cut this one off. Uh, I don't know how exciting all this was, but I don't know. There's like three people watched that last video. They're probably wondering how things are going. So now you know. All right, we'll see you in the next video, whenever that may be. Hopefully it's all good news. See you then.